Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom and welcome to today's Daf Yomi Nida Daf Ayin. Kimo, we're on Daf Ayin Beis Amar Beis, six lines from the bottom. Says the Gemara, Hani halachas ninu? Are these halachas? Hani kroin ninu? We learned these halachas from a pasuk. The Gemara is referring to the halachas of the cycle, the monthly cycle of an isha, which combines two separate categories. There are the yimei nida, and there are the yimei ziva. If an isha sees dam initially, she's tummy for seven days. Regardless of whether she does or doesn't see any more dam during those seven days, after which she is toivel and she is tar. After the completion of the yimei nidais, begin the yimei ziva. For the next eleven days, she is considered to be in her yimei ziva. After the completion of those eleven days, she goes back; she reverts back to yimei nidais. Now that is not to say that she is a zava or that she is a nida without seeing any dam. It is merely a term you use in potential. If she is to see dam during the yimei, those 11 yimei ziva, she has the halachas of ziva applied to her. If, however, the yimei ziva have completed, and she reverted back to her yimei nidais, certainly she's tar at this point, until she sees more dam. If she sees dam, the yimei nida begin anew, and all the halachas of yimei nida apply. Now what is the halacha? If Isha sees Dam during the Yimei Ziva, so if she sees one day, say she sees the first day of her Yimei Ziva, she is now Tame, she is a Zabak Tana, and she is called a Shimeres Yom Kineged Yom. She needs to keep, she needs to observe the next day, Betahara, to correspond to the first day of Tum. She needs to ascertain, at least in the beginning of the next morning, that she is Tar. We apply the halacha of Miksas Yom Kekulay, part of the day, in certain respects, are considered to have a significance as though the whole day was kept. She can be toivel, and she is currently tahar, but her tahar is pending. We have to wait and see if there are any more developments throughout the day. If she maintains her tahara throughout the rest of day number two, then she's tahar. If, however, she sees dam again on day number two, then this re'iya, this dam, is mitztar of l'mafreya. It's combined retroactively to her yesterday's re'iya, and she is a zava retroactively, and she needs to do Shmiris Yem Kineged Yom on day number three all over again. And the same system repeats itself. If she's Baidik herself, she's Tar, she's Toivel, now she's Tar. However, she has to wait and see what happens on the rest of the day number three. If she maintains her Tahara, then she's Tar. If, however, she sees Dam again on day number three, now she has evolved into a higher state of ziva, she's called Ezava Gedoyla, which requires Sfira Shiva Nakim. She needs to count seven clean days, and afterwards she's Toivel and brings a Karma. So the Gemara before it stated that Rabbi Lezer and Azariah held that this halacha, the Hilcha is Achada Soryim Shibain Nida Nida, these halachas were derived from Halacha Moshe and Sinai. We'll give it to Moshe and Har Sinai, and we'll not learn from Sukkim. Ask the Gemara, Hani Halachas Ninu. How could you propose that these halachas of Nida and Ziva were given to us as a halacha l'moshim esinai? Ha, nikroininu. We have psukim. We derive it from a drash from psukim. As we see in the following b'raisa, the son of Lent in a b'raisa, Yachal haroye gimel yomim betchilas nida ritzufim. Tehezava, I would think that although we know that there are yimei nida and there are yimei ziva, and they both have different halachas. They are totally different categories. If Aisha sees during her Yimei Nida, she is tummy for seven days and she's toivel. She doesn't need to do Sefer Shiva Nekim. She doesn't need to bring a carbon, regardless of how many days she sees within those seven Yimei Nida. She can see three days in a row, but she's still only a Nida. But I would think to say that that only applies when she sees one day. But... If she's, if she's to see for three days in a row, Gimel Yom and Betchilas Nida Arutzufim, on three consecutive days, that is a very serious re'ia. And perhaps she would have a din of Azava, even though she is right now currently during the days of Nidas. Uma ani makayim. When do I apply the Pasuk of Isha Kesia Zava? If an Isha will have a flow of dam, she'll have a flow of dam. And the pastor continues and says, 
Shivas Yomim Tia Benidoso. For the next seven days, she will be a Nida and not a Zava. That is merely, that is strictly Baroya Mechot. If she sees one day, then it's only a minor experience and she has a din of a Nida. Avalaroya Gimel Yomim Betchila Tia Zava. But if she sees three days, she is certainly a Zava and she carries with her all the stringencies and the halachis of a Zava. Talmud Loimar. That's why the Torah teaches us Nidasa. This is the Pasuk that's referring to a Zava. That a Zava has unique halachas, special halachas separate than the Hilchas Nida. The Torah specifically states when did that occur? When did the Re'i of Ziva occur? Nidasa. Not in the time period, not in the time frame of the Yimei Nida. So the Torah is clearly teaching us that in order for her to be considered to be a Zava, it cannot, her is, cannot take place during the Meiriya, the Meinida. Regardless of how many times she saw, even if she had three Riyas in a row, if it took place in the Meiziva, she's a Zava. If it took place in the Meinida, she is merely a Nida. Continues the Bryce. Al Nidasa, the Pasuk describing a Zava, says Al Nidasa, she will have a Ziva, Al Nidasa, meaning in close proximity to the main Nidas, says the Gemara, Samach it needs to be immediately following the main Nida. For his first seven days, she is a Nida, she's considered to be B'tayachi Mei Nidusa. The day following that, day number eight, is the Yoim Haziva. If she's to see three days, meaning the first of the main Ziva, Al of Beis and Gimel, she's a Zavak Doila. Ve'eli Ela Samach We only see from here, that the first day following the seven Yemenida is considered to be a Yom Ziva. And if she's to see one day, she's a Shemer Yom. Two days, she's a Shemer Yom connected Yom. She's to see three days, one, two days, one, two, and three of Yom Ziva, she's a Zavagadayla. Fine. That's only because it's Samuch, it's immediately following the seven Yemenida. How do I know? Muflag Lenidoso Yemechad Menayin. Suppose she skips a day. First day of her Yom Ziva, she didn't see anything. It was only once day number two arrived that she saw Dam. Is that also considered to be a Re'iyah during her Yimei Ziva? Menayin, how do I know? Talmud Laimar. Torah teaches us, Oi ki sozov. This is a Rebuy. The Torah is adding a word to teach us that not only in the day immediately following the Yimei Nida can she become a Zava, but if, even if she skips a day, she starts only singing only on day number two. Then it is also considered to be a zava as well. For instance, if she sees two, three, and four, she's a zava gedayla. Continues the gemara. Fine. So I know two things. We know that it needs to be samoch. We also know that if she skips a day, it's fine. Meaning, the day following the yemei ziva, the yemei nida, the first day yom aleph is a yom ziva, and so and so is the second day. She sees only starting, beginning from the second day, Yoim Beis, and then Beis Gimel and Dalet. She sees for three days starting from day number two, she's a full-fledged Zava. However, how do I know if she only starts seeing day number three, day number four? Is that too considered to be a Re'iya B'tayich Yimei Zivusa? Ein Liyala Yom Echad. She skips a day. Menayin the rabbis mufak shnayim shloisha abo chamisha shisha veshiva shmoyin otisha asar rabinayin. How do I know if she is to see only on day three, four, five, six up till ten? Now actually, the the brayse uses the word mufak shnayim. If she sees on day on day uh, two, meaning that it's the uh, it's the the second day of Yemei Ziva which actually we already learned from Apostle before. We said, Oiki Sazav is teaching us that if she sees on day two of Yimei Ziva, it's considered to be a, um, a Zava. So Taisa says that the, Gmar, that the, the Brisa is just um, lumping it together with the other numbers, although really, day two we've already discussed earlier. So in any case, the Gemara is looking for a Makar source to teach us that day three, four, and on, up until day number ten, is also considered a full-fledged Yom Ziva, and she only begins her Iyos on those days, it is also considered to be a bona fide Riyah of a Ziva, and carries with it all the halachas 
of Ziva. How do we know that? Menayin. Amris, you'll say like this. Ma Matsinu, just like we find. Biravi, on the fourth day. Shehu Sheroi Lesfira. It is fit for Sphira. For Roy Leziva and his Roy, he's fit to become, uh, she's fit to become a Zav on that day. Meaning like this. We said before that the first day of Yimei Ziva, that's posh, that's simple, that she it could become a Zav on that day. Meaning, if she sees Aleph, Beis, and Kimmel, the first three days of Yimei Ziva, she's a Zav Gedayla. What happens to a Zav Gedayla? She needs to do Sphira, Shiva, and Akim. She needs to count seven clean days. When do the Shiva and Akim begin? If she saw Aleph, Beis, and Kimmel. Certainly on the fourth day, on Dalit. Day number four, begin the Shiva and Akim. Now, the Gemara is saying like this, Mamatsinu, just like we find the day number four, who is Roy, who is fit, he can potentially be part of the Shiva and Akim, part of the Sphira of the Shiva and Akim, which will be applied which come as a result, as a outcome of a re'ir on day one, two, and three. Day one, two, and three are mechaiv obligate shiv and which begin on day four. So just like day four can be reckoned as one of the shiv and for a re'ir that began on day one, and similarly we find that the Torah is marb that day as being also a yom ziva, meaning we, we will marb it. We included from the Pasuk of Oisi Kisosov that not only if she begins her Riyya on day one, on Aleph, and the Riyya stretches Aleph, Beis, Gimel, as she told me, not only then, even if she only begins her Riyya on day two of the Yimei Ziva, meaning her Riyya began on Beis and it stretched over to Dalad, Beis, Gimel, Dalad, she is also considered to be a Zavag Doila. So just like we find that day Dalad has two components, has two properties, Number one, it be, can be considered as a Yom Sphira, the first day of the Shiva Nakim, which will be applied to a Re'ir that began on day Aleph. On day Aleph, continue to day Beis, to day Gimel. Aleph, Beis, and Gimel requires the Sphira Shiva Nakim starting from day Dalit. So just like it has that property, and also, the Torah also gave it a different halacha, that since he can be considered as one of the Shiva Nakim for the Re'ir of Aleph Beis Gimel, so too, he, is, he has the potential, the Eidalat has the potential to be a Yom Re'ir Ziva himself. Meaning, even if she only begins her Re'ir the second day, instead of Yom Aleph, she begins Yom Beis, and she sees for three days, Yom Dalad is part of that Riyah. It's Beis Gimel Dalad. So just like you find that Yom Dalad has two properties, Af Ani Ani Avi, so too I will include Hasiri. The tenth day, Sheroi Lesfira, he's also fit to be considered as part of the Yimei Sfira regarding a Riyah that began a Yom Aleph. Because again, if she sees Yom Aleph, Beis and Gimel, meaning her Re'iyah began on the first day of Yimei Ziva and stretched for three days. She became a Zava Gedoyla on that account. And now she needs to do Sphir Shiv and Akim. The Sphir and Akim, the Shiv and Akim begin on day four and stretch till day ten. So day ten ha- carries, within a, carries within, a, within a potential, a Koyach, to be considered as part of the Sphir Shiv and Akim for a Re'iyah that began way back on Yom Aleph. So too, V'roi Sphir Ziva. So too, since it has that property, it has that component, it has that aspect, it has that mila to be considered as one of the sphere of Shiva Nakim for a Ziva who began her ears on day number one, so too, it will carry the potential to become a Yom Ziva him himself. So this is a Mamatsinu, just like we find by day four, that these two properties are linked, being, having the ability to be counted as one of the Shiva Nakim for a Re'ir that began on day one is linked with the potential of being able to become a Yom Re'ir on its own and therefore even if the Re'ir began only on base, when base Gimel Dalad, it is considered a proper Zav Gedoyla so too, day 10, since it has that property of being considered 
being part of, being reckoned as part of the Shiv Nekiyim for a Riyah that began on day one, all of Beis and Gimel, which requires Shiv Nekiyim which stretches till day 10. Similarly, it will have the power, it will have the din of a Yom Ziva for a Riyah that took place on that day. Continues the Gemara. So now once we know that days 1 through 10 are all considered to be Yom Ziva, what about day 11? Is that too included? The Torah says that the Yom Ziva is not, is removed from the Nida period. So it's a Rebbe which teaches us to stretch it a, de- a step further over till day 11. Says the Gemara, Yochayl, I would think to say, Shani Mar Osar. If so, why stop at 11? Go on to 12. Says the Gemara, Armas, no. You must say not. Not like that. Love. Um, why not? Says the Gemara, why not? Why are you differentiating? Why are we discriminating between day 11 and day 12? Umar Rois, Lerabe Sachad Osar, Lohitish Neim Osar. Why are you including day 11 and excluding day 12? Says the Gemara. Mar Bani Achad Osar. There's a reason for it. Why do I prefer day 11? Because Sheroi Lesfiras Oiki Sosov. Now, let's recall. In the beginning of the Brisa, the Brisa taught us that the day immediately following the Yimei Nida is eligible to be considered a Yom Ziva if she sees on that day. The Brisa then added that even the next day also has that property. And we learned that from the Pasa of Oiki Sosov. Meaning, if she sees on days 2, 3, 4, she skips day 1. She only begins her ears the following day. Day 2, 3, 4 of Ziva, that is considered a proper ear of Ziva. Now, in that case, when she sees Beis Gimel Adalad, when do her Sphira Shiva Nakim end? Till where does it stretch? So let's make a simple calculation. If she's holding it ready at day four, she saw Beis Gimel Dalit, so it's four, it's the fourth day inter Yemei Ziva, add another seven, so we landed on day 11. So we see that day 11 carries with it the potential to be considered as one of the Yemei Sphira Shiva Nekim for a year that began on day two, which we included from the Pasuk of Aiki Sazov. So therefore, it is logical, it is svar to say that when the Torah includes another day, Meaning, we got stuck at 10 and we wanted to go further, and we had a Pasuk tell us, yes, you can go further. It is logical to say that the Pasuk is including another day, but only up until 11. Why? Because 11 has the property of a, a Yom Sphira with regard to a Re'ia that began on day number 2. It was 2, 3, 4, plus 7 equals 11. Again, Marbani, I will include, I will refer, Echad Osar. Why? Sheroi le Sfiras Oikisazov. He is considered, he is potentially, he has the potential to be considered, to be eligible, to be counted as one of the Yimea Sphira for a Riyah that began on base, which we included from the Pasa of Oikisazov. However, Moisiani, I'll exclude you base. Day number 12 doesn't have that property, doesn't have that advantage. Shein Roy le Sfiras Oikisazov. He cannot be counted as one of the Shiv for a sphere that for a riya that began on day two, the riya that began on day two, meaning two, three, four, plus ten, plus seven lands you at eleven, and twelve is past that. So therefore, we're only going to be marber day eleven. So in conclusion, this is the makar. This is the source that an, an isha post nida, after completing the shivasi mei nida, she has eleven days achadas for yain, of Yimei Ziva, which carries it all the halachas of Azava, but no more than 11. Now what happens during those 11 days? We only know that she sees three times, three days of those 11. She's Azava G'dayla. We learn it from Psukim and previous series. Shnei Yomim Minayin. How do we know that she only sees two days. She's also a Zava, perhaps not a Zava Ktoila, but a Zava nevertheless. Tamalami Yemei. The Pasuk uses a plural, Ashen Rabin. Yemei is two. Yoy Mechad Menayim. She sees only one day. 
How do we know that she's a zava? Tamad loyim kol yimei. We see from the word koil that we are we're gonna we, the, the word koil includes even one day of Riyah. Tmeya, the pasuk says kol yimei kol yimei zayiv tumasa kimei nidasa tia tmeya hi. We learn from there that she is tamei. She is tamei just like a nida. Kimeni dasa tia tmeihi. So what do we learn? What do we derive from a nida to azava? Says the Gemara, Malamid shemetame as boil kinida. There's a pasuk by a nida which teaches us that somebody who's mishamish with a nida, her nida, her tuma, carries over to him. He also becomes tamei. So too by azava. Why does the Torah compare the tuma of azava to a nida to teach us this halacha that a boil azava? Will also become tummy. He, the Torah adds the word he, which is coming to be my to exclude he matames boyla. Only a zava has the power to be matame her boil. One who does tashmish with her. Ve'ein azav matame mashu boil. However, a zav, a man who is a zav, he will not pass over tuma to anisha who is boil. Says the Gemara. Why does the Torah have to teach us this? Why would I entertain this thought? Why would I think? Why would it enter my mind that a zav is matame if he is boil? Says the Gemara, yeah, validinu. I would think to say that we can derive, actually, we can derive a zav from a zava with a kavachim. Validinu, we have a kavachim. Umahi. Umahi she'ena matama briyas kibiyamim. Since the isha is not matama briyas kibiyamim, meaning, we know that an isha. In order to become a zava, she needs to see three times. But they need to be in three separate days. She has to see Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. If she were to see, suppose, three times in one day, it only counts as one riyah. She needs her riyahs separated, scattered, distributed amongst days. However, an ish, a man, he is metama beziva ber The tomb of the isha depends is reckoned according to Re'iyas. If he is to see twice, three times, even on one day, he has a halacha of Azov. So since we find that an Isha, who is not, is not Matama Re'iyas could be Yomim, she's not Matama through Re'iyas, through sightings, as she is Matama could be Yomim, she has a restriction. She, her Re'iyas need to be categorized, enumerated through days, connected with days. Still, she has a Chumrah, Metames Baila. Although she has a restriction, she has a limitation. Regarding Re'iyais, still no. Nevertheless, we see that she's Metames Baila. Who, a man, she Metame Re'iyais can be Yom. He has a mile, he has an advantage over Nisha. He is Metame through, through Re'iyais. He doesn't need to wait until the next day. He can Metame lump sum. He, do, he does a few Re'iyais in one day, he's already Tame. So he has a mile, he has an advantage. He has a stringency. Ain't it in? Isn't it obvious? Can't we say that it is a lot? Isn't it logical? Surely that he should also have the chumrah of the isha and be matame somebody who is boil. Therefore, Torah has to come and teach us. Torah is teaching us an exception. That's where Torah has to come and teach us. No, this halacha matame boil is only strictly regarding an isha and not regarding a zav. He is not metami mashu boil. Continues the price. Umenayin she she oise mishkav amoishav. The Hagah on the side removes the word shehu. It's referring to he. Umenayin she he oise mishkav amoishav. How do we know that she can be metami? Her seat, her couch, something which she sits. Mishkav something which she lies on. Amoishav something which she sits on. To become a very very high level of tum of amatum. How do we know that? Tamod loyma k'mishkav nidasa. There is, including, there is being marba, a higher grade of tuma regarding something which is considered her mishkav. Now, ve'ein yel l'shleishi yamim. Perhaps, this stringency of mishkav of Moshev, I will only apply to Azav HaGadayla who sees three riyas. Since she is so advanced in her tuma, so she also has the din of mishkav of Moshev. Shnei yamim inayim. How do we know when Isha only had two riyas? We'll also have the din of mishkav of Moshev. Now, this is a different Pasuk than the Pasuk quoted earlier. This is a Pasuk regarding Mishkav Azov. That the Pasuk is telling us that a, a Mishkav, a Shayish Tishkav Alav, anything that she, a Mishkav that the Zava 
Wulayan, will become Tamei Tumas Mishkov. And in that Pasuk, the Pasuk also uses the words of Kol Yimei. So, so the Gemara says, Yimei will teach us Shnei Yomim. Tamadoi Mi Yimei, even an Azava who only saw twice, two days, will also have the dinner of Mishkov. Yimei Echad Minayim, what if she only saw one day? How do we know that? Tamadoi Mi Kol Yimei. So the Kol is being marved by even one Riyah. Continues the price. Umenai Shosafaris Echad Lechad. How do we know the Halacha of Shemeri Siyam Kinegad Yom? That if Isha sees one day, or two days, she needs to be shemer the next day, b'tahara, to correspond to the day of Tumah. She's not Tomei seven days. She's only Tomei up until the Shemirah of the next day. How do we know that? Tamad loimar yi'ala. The Torah is being marbe. is including another halacha, yi'ala, that she needs to do shimur when she saw one day, she needs to be shemer the next day. She saw two days, she needs to be shemer the third day. Continues the price. Yachal tisbar shivel shnayim. Fine. She sees one day, and she needs to be shamed the next day. If she's to her, fine. She can be table, and she's finished. What if she sees two days? Perhaps I would think that a two day Ria will obligate her to do shivel nakim. Yachal tisbar shivel shnayim. If she has shnayim, she has two days of Ria, she has to be saved shivel nakim. Why would I think to say that? Because we find that halacha by Azov. Vidinu, let's make a kavachaymer. Umahu, shein sefer echad laechad. Since we find by a ish, we don't give him the halacha of shemer zayim kenegadayim. There's no halacha of counting one day to correspond to the other. So he has a leniency. Nevertheless, sefer shivel shnayim. By an ish, by a zav, after two reiyos, he already needs to be sefer shivel nekim. So although he has this limitation that he doesn't have the halacha of shemer zayim kenegadayim, meaning. If he only sees one day, he's merely a Balkari. He doesn't need to be Shemir Yom Kinegadim. This is the Shita of Basil mentioned in that time base. So he has a leniency, he has a Kula. Nevertheless, he has a tremendous Chumrah. That once he gets up to two, to number two, now he's obligated to do Shiva Nakim. Certainly he and Isha, she's a fair as Echad Echad. She merely sees one time, she already needs to do Shemir Yom Kinegadim. She has a tremendous Chumrah above and beyond an Ish. Ein isn't it? Logical. Wouldn't you say, certainly, Shatispar Shiva Lashnaim, that she would have the same Chumrah, at least the same Chumrah as an Ish, and once she sees twice, then she already needs to do Shiva Nakim? Tamad Laimar, Yiyala. The Torah is telling you, Yiyala. In this case, we're darshan and Yiyala as a restriction. That if she only sees once or twice, then she is limited to the halacha of Sefer's. Echad echad, she tisper echad echad. She only has to be shem yom kinegadim, and she does not have the additional halacha of shiva nekim. So let's uh, quickly summarize the brayse from the pasuk of beloyes nidasa. We learn that the yemei ziva are outside of the yemei nida. There's no din of yemei ziva during the yemei nida. From the pasuk of aiki sazov, we learned that. Not only the day immediately following the main nida, even if she skips a day, she begins her riyah on base. She sees day number two, three, and four, base gimel dalit. When Marbe from the pasuk of Aiki Sazov, that that constitutes a riyah b'mei zivasa. What about the rest of the days, from then till day number ten? So Marbe made a mamatzinu to be Marbe that as well. What about day number eleven? So we had a riyah from a pasuk of Belayis Nidasa to include even that day. Why do we prefer day 11 over day 12? So Gemara worked it out, and the Gemara said that there's an advantage for day 11 to be included in the Yemei Ziva versus day 12. Day 12. How do we know if she sees only two days, she's a Zavaktana? That we learned from Yemei. What about one day? From Kol. What about that she's Metame Herboyala? From Kol Yemei Tameya. What about that she's Metame Mishkov Umoyshav? That we learned from Kemishkov Nidosa. Is she Matam Mishkov Moshev even if she only sees two days? Yes, because it says Yimei. What about one day? Yes, from Kol. What about an Isha that sees only one day? Is she obligated to do Sphiris Yem Kinegadim? Yes, and that we learn from Yila. Now, um, the Gemara also went through the differences between a Zav and a Zava as follows A Zav, his Re'iyas are dependent on Re'iyas. Not on Yamim. If he sees two, three times, even within one day, it is considered to be separate Riyas. An Isha, on the other hand, her Riyas are dependent on days. 
what other differences do we have between a Zav and a Sava? If a Zav sees one day, he's merely a Balkari. He does not require to be Shem Yerem Kinegad Yerem. An Isha, however, she sees one day, she's already considered to be a Zava, a Zava Katana. She's Metam and Mishka Vamayshav, and she needs to be Shem Yerem Kinegad Yerem. What about two Riyas? So by a Zav, is actually a Chumrah. He's already considered a full-fledged Zav, and he needs to be Sefer Shiva Nekim. An Isha, on the other hand, if she sees two days, she's merely a Zavak Tana, she needs to be Sefer Yom Li Yom, Shem Yom Keneged Yom. What about three Riyas? So by an Ish, that obligates him to do Shiva Nekim, and to bring a Karban. He's already a full-fledged Zav who requires a Karban. An Isha, the same token. She, at this point, she needs to shiv in Akim, and she needs to bring a Karban. So regarding three Riyas, an Isha and an Isha are very similar. Continues the Gemara. Amo le Rav Shmaya le Rav Abba. Eima, perhaps I can say, be a mama to have a Zava. By day, if she sees by day, she's a Zava. Balalio, she only sees at night to have a Nida. Only during the May Nida can a Riyah at night, we metamah her. But a Zava? A Zava can't become Tomei by seeing Dam at night. Why is that? Because in the Pasuk of Ziva, the Torah mentions day. Yomim, Yimei. So perhaps the Torah is teaching us that Tumas Ziva can only take place by day. Amalei, Alecha Makra. For this reason, the Torah teaches us to counter this argument. The Torah teaches us Al Nidasa. The Pasuk describing Tumas, tumas Ziva specifically states that it happens Immediately following the Nidus. When is that? Samach Nidus. It's close to Nidus. Samach Nidus Emas Havi. What is immediately following the Imei Nida? Belelia, it's at night. Because if an Isha sees Dam, she's Tamei for seven days. When the seven days are over at nightfall, she can be Tavil and she's Tar. Her Imei Nida are over. And if the terrorist says that the Imei Nida Ziva begin immediately following in close proximity to Imei Nida, when is that? That's at night. We go, Karla Zava, and the Torah calls her Zava. So you see clearly that if an Isha sees Dam during her Yemei Ziva, regardless of whether it's by day or at night, she is considered to be a full fledged Zava. Concludes the Gemara. Tana de Yo. They learned in the Raisa, in the Ismadrish of El Yo, some say it was a Tana, some say it was the actual Yo Anavi. If somebody learns halachas daily, Muftah is guaranteed that he is destined, he has a portion, he is destined to, for the world to come. Shenemar halichais oilam loy, the ways of the world are his. Al tikri halichais. Don't read halichais, ela halachais. But rather, halachais laws. If a person, the Pasuk is teaching us, if a person studies, he learns halachais, oilam loy, then the world to come, oilam haba, is destined for him, it's his. Now, the morale explains what is the, what is the um, significance of learning halachas every day that he's guaranteed to be a ben elam haba? What is so special? In reality, every Torah that a person learns earns him a chelik elam haba, and a very great portion of elam haba. So, why specifically halachas? Says the Maharal that unlike other types of learning, halachas have a uniqueness. Since they are clear, they are straightforward, there's very little room for deviation. It's different than learning a sugya when you suggest one thing, you ask something else, until you get to the clarity, until you conclude. It's a long road, it's a circular route. But halacha is clear cut, it's absolute, it's very direct. There's very little room for deviation. So a person who takes care to learn halachas every day, he's guaranteed. A direct route to a great portion in Elam Haba. Marsha asks, why is the Gemara bring this Chazal specifically here at the end of Msech Nida? And he offers a very novel approach. He says that we've learned many halachas. The Msech was full of different shitas and different kinds of cases. Very complicated Msech But we all know that today, most of these halachas, most of these different scenarios, different shitas, don't really apply to us in a practical sense. 
since we are Noyeg, Chomer Derev Zera, that every Isha, regardless of where she is at, may Nida, may Ziva, regardless of how many days she sees, we consider her to be a Zava. Even if she sees a Mashu Kechardal, she has to do, she has to keep the halachas, the stringencies, the Chumras of a Zava Gedoyla. She needs to keep Sphere Shiva Nekim. So why then do we immerse ourselves and involve ourselves in so many different halachas and cases that are just not practical in today's day, today's time? Says the Marsha that even if it doesn't have a halacha lemaisa a practical manifestation, nevertheless, it's teres Hashem, it's chachmas Hashem. It's what Hashem had in mind for us. It's the rotzon Hashem. It's an emanation of His goodwill that he had in mind for us, Kaviyoch, to run our life according to the halachas of Torah, and thereby be zoiche, to achelik l'halabah, by being mekalish us and retiring ourselves and elevating ourselves in this world by applying the various halachas to the various scenarios, various situations. So even if they don't actually ever come into being, merely immersing ourselves in this rot, in this chachmas Hashem, in this rot and Hashem, we are connecting to the highest form of vekas to Hashem, and therefore, we are certainly um, earning a mizaycha to a very great portion of Elam Habo. It's not just a chelik Elam Habo. It's a ben Elam Habo. We are planted, we are belonging in Elam Habo. It's the highest form of Elam Habo reward. And this is very similar to what the Gemara says elsewhere in Sanhedrin regarding the halachas of Ben Surya and Meire, Even though it never happened and never will happen, still in all there is a mitzvah, there is a schus. It's a privilege for us to involve ourselves and immerse ourselves and envelope ourselves in this Chachmas Hashem and connect ourselves to the Eivishter. And as the Gemara there says, even though it never happened, never will happen. The Roish Bekabal Schar. Had been a Lachtinoikis, Uslikalom Masechas Nida, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov. It's been truly the greatest pleasure to be able to have the Schus to learn together. Daf after daf, mesech to after mesechas, and finally, Baruch Hashem, this great accomplishment, the full shas, Baruch Hashem, it's been wonderful being able to learn together, bound by Simchas Torah, bound by the Gishmak of learning Torah. Thank you, Hashem, for giving us all the opportunity to learn together, to be connected to you on the highest level through Tefillah and through Torah. Hashem, please give us all this Yat of Gishmaya, heavenly assistance to continue having much hatzlacha in our learning, in our davening, in our midas toivahs. Please Hashem, bench us with bracha, with parnasa, with gezund, with nachas, with simcha, with geshmak, believe in our Torah. And may we all be zoicha to join together in dance and joy. With bias Mashiach Zedkenu, and here be a menu amen. All the best. I know you the know is the soy sato you know he 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 lon who was the yo you know oh you the know is the soy sato you know he he lon who was the yo you know I know you the know is the soy sato you know he he lon who was the yo you know Oh, you know, 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 you know,